Good morning, Revolution, and welcome to this week. Hey, we got Michael is here. Good morning, Michael. Good morning. How are you? And Scott is on vacation, and I'm good. And we're joined by our good brother John Case in the great state of West Virginia, in the city of Harpers Ferry this That's morning. Right. Hey, John. Good morning. How are you? Well, I'm doing good, and I'm. Uh, uh... We're organizing a big demonstration by caravans in the state, and we had great had a great meeting about it this morning. So, <clears throat> I'm I'm caravan. I'm to go. What's the what's the issue? What are y'all caravaning? Oh, uh, the labor the FLCIO. Is that a verb? Uh, caravaning. Caravaning. I think it should be now. Uh, okay. Call it a moving a moving picket line, maybe, or a uh, you know <laughs> a moving protest. My friend James wants to call it. Anyway, so what's we're, the uh, issue? Uh, racial and economic justice and uh, COVID recovery okay. is the uh, adopted uh, motion at uh, the Labor Council. <clears throat> and uh, in line with the uh, call that uh, Richard Trumpka sent out, I don't know, a month, ago, month or so ago, um, calling for uh, affiliated locals to, uh, to uh, use this tactic as a, as a safe way to, to join the Black Lives Matter protest. Um, in the COVID era. And uh, it's been successful in a number of places. Uh, we had some help this morning. Uh, my, my friends, you know, Scott Marshall and uh, Carl Davidson, who have both been doing this already, uh, called in to give us some assistance to uh, uh, some local people, a lot of local people, actually. Uh, so we're looking forward to it. Yeah, looking forward to it. So it's going to be a turn the tide. Uh, the, we're going to defeat Trump in our two counties and we'll uh, set a uh, We'll set a recent record, actually, if we do that. <laughs> so, well, he certainly good. needs to be uh, defeated, and some records need to be set, Michael, because uh, it looks like there's a big debate taking place in the Congress. I thought that the goddamn bill would be settled now. Mm -hmm. uh, the Senate is still messing around, and they haven't approved the $600 yet. They're going to, but they seem to be stuck on some other issues. Uh, have you been following that, Michael? Yeah, it's a shame. You know, with all these people whose benefits, I believe, ended, the 600 bucks ended um, on Monday of this past week. I know a few of them personally who are like, they don't know how they're going to pay the rent, buy food, you know, survive in the middle of this pandemic and, you know, unemployment crisis. Uh, but just two days ago in Times Square, a few of us went up um, and protested there around noon. And it was kind of a broad coalition effort. It was kind of smaller, but it was, I thought, very effective. Uh, just hearing all these stories. That was the one that was sponsored by this unemployed action group? Yes, yes, exactly. And then yesterday- Some we of the were Democratic out. Socialists are here in New York? I believe, yeah, DSA was there, the DSA mm -hmm. of uh, New York and some other groups. Um, there were some union members there as well. And so that, you know, that's one point, uh, part of it. But then there's also, you know, the action that we did yesterday. Yes, as, you know, a communist party here in New York City, we went down to Washington Square Park and did a mutual aid effort, handed out party literature, uh, you know, recruited a couple people to the party, you know, so helping people um, with their basic needs, whether it be a mask, hand sanitizer, snacks, water, you know, we have to be there for them because like you said, the Senate is taking a long time and we don't know when exactly this is gonna be passed. Now, the People's World is organizing a national, along with some other groups, uh, is organizing uh, a national town hall meeting uh, uh, on the 16th, uh, 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 John, uh, and a number of good speakers who are going to be there. And I wonder if this bill, have you been following it, uh, this legislation, uh, uh, John? Yes. You think that they're still going to be debating it on the 16th or? What the hell seems to be the problem? Uh, I believe that it uh, it may be the only thing. Uh, it depends on how much trouble Republican governors and senators are in, uh, because it goes completely against their philosophy. Uh, paying people not to work. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. uh, you're paid. They're, 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 they're paid not to work. I mean, what what the hell are you talking about? Is that, well, that, you do, know, uh, do the Republican senators work? I mean, you you, you, you may th you may think uh, collecting dividends is not work, but they <laughs> but they have a different opinion about it. Okay. Okay. So, uh, anyway, <laughs> anyway, but I I I, uh, I thought like you a, a week or so ago, and especially uh, with a Trump slide in the polls that. Uh, but he has not gotten below 25, uh, 50% of the Republican uh, polling. 
He has not. And if you may recall, oh, no. uh, <clears throat> if, as you may recall, uh, Nixon uh, caved right about the time he just got to be 23 percent of the thing, which means he had fallen two points below, assuming a 50 50 Republican Democrat divide, he had fallen two points below the majority of Republicans. And there was a, a, it's like a dam broke there, you know, uh, happened right about the time that the uh, 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 case were revealed. But now I think uh, but Trump has still uh, got uh, the majority of the Republicans and he's raised a ton of money. Um, so it, and in that situation, if you're just a calculating Republican senator or congressman, you're going to say, oh, gee, if I oppose him, he's going to run somebody against me and he has more support. Uh, he could win. OK, that's that's you know, I'm sure they're thinking so mm. it might. Uh, you know, and and Trump, uh, you know, he wants the death count to go up. Because that's that increases the grounds on which he can wreck the election, you know, by any number of means. OK, which is, I think, his plan at the moment. I mean, he's been. Wait a minute. Explain that a little bit. If the death count goes up, that gives him a vehicle for uh, busting up the election. How, that, well, if the, if, the, if the death count goes up, I mean, it's uh, evidence of a national emergency and he's looking for emergency powers by any oh, means. I see. OK, and uh, he wants the ability to shut down the post office for mail or this or that or whatever. OK, and so whether he even if he doesn't win it, he wants to damage the credibility of the election. Oh, it was a fake election. You know, it was uh, a fraud and uh, attempt to seize power by any and, and he's shameless about it i mean he might as well be just channeling adolf hitler okay i mean uh, and and and, and, and actually even if he knows he's going to lose i think he's he's been pointed that direction from day one okay? well they asked, you know they asked him Clyburn, also, they asked him when when they think he would have a vaccine and he said oh you know sometime soon you know he talks in those and they said before November 3rd, he goes, oh, yeah, for sure by November 3rd. And so it's just, you know, <laughs> he does everything, you know, in his powers to, you know, play. Yeah. And but also on the other side of that, like I arrived home yesterday from work and MSNBC was on. And the headline I saw right when I walked in the door was Democrats are doing increasingly better in southern states. And I remember this is like deja vu. This was what happened in 2016. People, you know, because they didn't like either candidate. They just stayed home because even the liberal news meet, uh, outlets were saying, you know, oh, it's going to be fine. There's no chance this guy Trump's going to win, you know. Yeah. So I think they're kind of shooting themselves in the foot. Um, I, have a kind of headlines. I got a confession to make about that. I was on the radio uh, at that time, and I actually put forward the theory that I thought that maybe Bill had hired Trump to run because that would be a guarantee that Hillary could win. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I had to eat that. That was you know, <laughs> good thing you weren't probably you weren't wearing a hat. You <laughs> promised to eat it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You'd have some, you'd have I mean, some serious indigestion. Was, I, you but know, but I, do you really think that if um, the election is closed or that Trump is that he loses that he's gonna try to stay in office? I mean, Clyburn said that on TV last week on uh, I think he will, CNN. Yes. Huh? I think so. Look, the system is in, uh, we got a serious structural crisis, man, uh, that is moving independently of almost all actors at this point, at least in part. I mean, you're talking I, I, about the economy now. Yes, the economy and the social mm -hmm. collapse from the COVID is going to change the business models of millions and millions of businesses. I mean, how do you have a half open restaurant and make a profit? Seriously. You just come to New York, man. You should see them. All, all of the restaurants have chairs outside now and tables and flowers oh, and, you know, but yeah, yeah. I don't, I, still, I don't know yeah. how they survive. I, I agree. I don't think they're going. Oh, you want, I think once the, the liquid liquidity from the fed, you know, uh, goes away. I mean, there's a, who knows anyway, and airlines, you know, I mean, uh, oh. they're in there, the toilet Buffett bailed out completely. Right. You know, and uh, so I, I think you got such a structural problem that uh, the political institutions and forces are everyone struggling with what to do. Okay, and you, if you're a right-wing Nazi type, I mean, you have no idea what to do. 
except dominate or whatever. But uh, dominate the battle space, isn't that? Yeah, dominate the battle space. You know, like they train these uh, Minnesota cops and stuff. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, I, it's a terrible jam. So I, I expect he'll do the Hitler thing, man. He's going to keep going until he's in the grave. But do you think that he has support? I mean, you know, the generals have uh, risen up, some of them at least, against him. Yeah. Uh, you know, former defense yeah. secretary, former national security <laughs> advisors. Uh, the, the entire Bush administration. <laughs> oh, even, yeah. some, even some Republican politicians, you know, who, you know, are a little bit more moderate, if you want to use that term, when he said, you know, maybe we should cancel the elections. You know, they were like, no, that's kind of pushing it. You know, even uh, who was that guy the other day? Listen to his podcast. He's a right. Who said it? He no, he's no moderate. And the senator uh -huh. from uh, Florida, Rubio, is, as well. And uh, but the guy is just loco. He's getting bizarre. I mean, do you the business element, John? Do you think that big business is going to, you know, because isn't he becoming uh, a problem for? Profit making. I mean, uh, well, he's I the, mean, worried well, about. Yeah, he is now. But uh, the liberal billionaire billionaires hate him. I mean, they really do. Uh, you know, from uh, you know Gates, Bloomberg, uh, the Bezos, these guys, they hate him. But uh, I think even Zuckerberg hates him uh, now. So uh, they're all against him. But you know, I mean, he's he's still raking in tons of money. You know, yeah. from real estate. You know, def defense contractors okay or the other well he's got them and he, he's i mean if you're boeing who, who's your only hope okay at right. this point uh, and uh and oh i don't i'm not sure about the oil industry but I, so far i mean he he seems to be getting he's still ahead of biden what hmm, i thought was most scary was um just the other day i thought sebastian gorka he advertised that he was going to talk about our party which he really didn't except, you know, he labeled every Democrat he knows a communist. But so I tuned in and it was interesting what his line was to his listeners. It was, I understand most of you probably don't like Trump. You probably don't like the president right now or you're worried, you're frustrated. It's a hard situation we're living, but we have to support him. We have to make phone calls for him. We have to write letters for him because if we don't win, the left is going to win. It's either uh, freedom, America, he called it, or the left. And right. so, you know, they're trying to make it not about the president even. So people, I but think- they've been red baiting the campaign and they've exactly. been red baiting the campaign. They've been, then they're trying to find every kind of, then they went after Congresswoman Bass, you know, because of she uh, knew O'Neill Cannon and all of that. But they tried the same thing, John, with uh, Obama, if you remember. Yes, they did. Back in 2007, mm -hmm. 2008, because of this uh, guy who was his, he said he was his mentor in Hawaii, but it didn't stick. Mm -hmm. I don't think the anti-communism has the same vitality that it used to have. And I, yeah. I, I don't think it's gonna go anywhere. But I wanna ask you another question, John. Let's assume that Trump does try to do that. Then what does the democratic movement, broadly speaking, do? Strike. Somebody asked me that question the other night. I mean, what do you do? Uh, you know, March? Occupy, uh, strike, yeah. uh, move to Canada. <laughs> you have to make the, you have to make the country ungovernable by mm. that force. I mean, that's your that's really what you have to do. I mean, you're a situation where you can't reach across the aisle to this kind of guy. OK, I mean, there's no perfect union anywhere that involves a co uh, uh, an agreement with them. OK, really. And so, uh, you know, you have to make, if they're gonna hold on to it illegally or through corruption or fraud, then uh, you have to uh, you have to make it so they can't do that. And uh, I mean, that's right. a classic, that's the classic issue, right? You gotta shut them, make it, you know, you may wanna do that, but you're gonna, you're gonna get stuck in the mud and uh, there's no- Mass I mean, resistance. Yes. In, in every uh, possible, uh, way and, and form. But uh, I don't know. Uh, they say that uh, Mr. Biden is ahead and Lord knows who he's going to choose. I thought he was going to choose his vice presidential pick this week. Today is Friday. That's that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. I wonder, what the, I wonder what the argument's about. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's really because I see uh, uh, the, the right wing unloaded yesterday on Susan. Um, 
rice, right? Spoon rice, yeah. right. Uh, I guess maybe they think she's moving. Up. They're, they're whoever they think is the vice president. They're, they're, you know, they're they're trying to smear, right? So uh, they spent a while on Kamala Harris, and they spent some time on um, who's the mayor down in uh, who's the candidate from, from yeah. Florida, right? From Florida, yeah, yeah. Okay, <clears throat> uh, governor of Michigan, I think too. Uh, and the, well, yeah, but I, but I mean, the pressure is on him to. Uh, choose an African-American vice president. OK, I think that's the uh, the upheaval around George Floyd has made that. I don't see how you can get out of that one, frankly. Uh, and he's got mm. super qualified candidates. Okay, I mean, I mean, you listen to Susan Rice recently. Oh, she's, she's brilliant. She's, she's tough, man. <laughs> I don't agree with her about everything, but she is. Yeah, tough. I don't know about her politics, <laughs> but she's very, very, very smart. But here's the thing. We said that at least I said that prior to South Carolina, I said that it's going to take a movement to defeat Trump. And the only candidate in the Democratic primary that generated movement-like characters were Bernie Sanders on the one side and Elizabeth Warren on the other. Yeah. And the only person left standing is Elizabeth Warren you know, uh, that would generate, that had that kind of, Kamala Harris didn't have it, you know. No, and, she didn't. Uh, um, but she does, from, but she does from California and it's hard for me to see oh, how he right. can. She had that big rally out there. It, it's hard for me to see how Joe uh, does not put California pretty high up in the administration. Um, Mm. I mean, he needs them. He needs them big time. And he needs them in New York. He needs the states that got strong leadership and a solid base of uh, doing something a little more progressive than uh, in, and being responsive, just basically being responsive to crisis. OK, uh, it was a state in, level of state intervention that is required. I mean, it's still not yet where it's required, but you see a certain example in um, who's the New York governor Cuomo's leadership. And also in uh, Newsom, um, although I think everybody wishes Jerry Brown was still governor there. Uh, but uh, and that's a uh, that's that's a very big deal because uh, you look at all these. Uh, the trade war with China hurts California more than anybody, except maybe British Columbia. OK, and um, and it's a big, big deal. Uh, so I think uh, I mean, you're you're, look, you're talking about uh, the, the union being threatened. Uh, the divisions are so sharp, right? I mean, you, it, it's not yet at 1858, but it's it's not good. It's getting, it's getting kind of close, but he doesn't need California. Uh, California is pretty much in the bag to win the election. So my prediction is Kamala Harris is not going to be the candidate. Yeah, probably um, true. What he does need, though, is Florida. So I'm going to go out here on a limb and I'm going to argue <laughs> that the woman, the sheriff is in Congress, his name, that's going to be his pick. Because uh, he needs Florida in order to win the election. Mm -hmm. And picking her will help get him over the top. Will it help him win um, Florida? But, 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 but is that going to be, I mean, count it up. I mean, is putting her on the ballot going to actually win, uh, win Florida? I'm not sure. See, well, a lot of times you pick, you know, candidates from these southern states and they end up voting Republican anyway. OK, uh, Abrams, you, yeah. yeah, you may even you may pick up some votes because of it, but you don't necessarily win the state. And uh, well, Florida is a swing state. It's, you know, it's swing. It's not it's not a it's not a Republican state in the sense that, you know, Alabama, Mississippi, or yeah. Georgia, even Georgia. Is, they say even Texas is moving uh, uh, purple. Yeah. So we'll have to we'll, we'll have to see um, how that goes. However it goes, it's going to take an overwhelming vote in order to ensure, and there's really no insurance that Trump exits from office, Michael. And the young generation is going to have to play a big role. Absolutely. So I hope the young communists are. Uh, engaging in the process and encouraging people to uh, uh, get out there. Uh, that's that's gonna be really, really important uh, because the youth vote, I think it, for Bernie, John, it 
held steady this time, but it didn't go up, and he was counting on it going up. And some people were arguing that the youth are disengaged, but then the uprising took place. Yeah. And you saw all of these millions of young people joined by their fathers and grandmothers and cousins, and it was just, and that's still part of the process. Uh, we should, we it, shouldn't underestimate also the role of voter suppression, not only in the African American communities. I know, you know, Stacey, Stacey Abrams has really highlighted that issue with her Fair Fight Action uh, mm. uh, pro uh, project. But in the case of Bernie Sanders in the primaries, I mean, there were students at universities waiting seven, eight hours in line. And I mean, you know, some of them never made it there and they just got tired of waiting. And I'm worried of that happening again with the coronavirus pandemic on campuses because some students are registered back at home, you know, in their hometowns and some are registered at their universities, but with some of these hybrid reopening uh, schedules, some of them aren't gonna be there in November. Some of them will be back home. In fact, I know, I understand that at least at OU where I went, where I was teaching, there were some, uh, some students are gonna come in at the end of um, August and then some students are gonna come in at the end of September and then everyone goes home shortly before Thanksgiving break and they don't come back until January. So where, you know, are people gonna be thinking about voting and where they're registered in the midst of all that? Cause it is confusing, right? right? We don't know. And so, you know, let's assume that the Democrats win and all of that works out, you know? John, do you think that given the structural problem, the objective situation in the economy, the health crisis, the environmental crisis, by the way, they say this hurricane season is gonna be terrible. And, yeah. and God knows the interpenetration between the, the hurricanes and the crisis on, and on the Eastern seaboard and the South, that that's gonna create uh for people crowding into you know uh, shelters and so on and so forth john do you think that the democratic party has uh grappled with the depth of the crisis and that they're prepared to carry on the economic reforms that are necessary in order to invest in the economy and provide jobs and rebuild and all of that or are they still, I mean, I know it's moved in a better direction, but do you right. get the sense that they're grappling with the degree of the crisis? Well, they have a, no. Uh, I think they uh, are gonna have, first of all, it depends on how you approach it. I, I mean, if it were me, uh, and just looking at it from where I'm at, I mean, the first thing I would do if I was Biden is I would declare a national emergency. Hmm. And um, I would, cause you're, Suppose the uh, Republican, you win, but the Republicans end up with enough uh, strength in the Senate to block legislat legislation, okay? Um, <clears throat> or at least compromise it into a place where it's less effective. Uh, I, I, you know, if, if how many people are gonna be dying per day waiting for that to work itself through? Uh, that's that's what problem. happened to Obama, by the way. That's a problem. And uh, but now you do. You certainly have grounds for for calling an emergency. I mean, there are <laughs> and you have two. the biggest problems is the state has to become the employer of last resort. Because it's true, they cannot write six mo modern monetary theory, notwithstanding, they cannot write checks at six hundred dollars a month for everybody forever. They cannot mm. do that. OK. I mean, uh, you, you know, eventually the debt will become so big and the currency will become worthless. OK, so uh, so so, yeah, you got it. You've got to put people back to work. Basically, and there's nobody can do that but the state in this kind of a thing. I mean, you look back at whether it was World War II after the Depression, you know, the Roosevelt mobilization for the war, which is actually what put people back to work, whether you look at you know, 1921 after the Civil War in Russia, you know, and the fact that the economies collapsed there too, or after the Cultural Revolution in China, or after, you know, World War I in Germany, you know, I mean, you end up with, right, there's, there's, as the state cannot act, someone's going to invade, or the thing's going to fly apart, right, you know, like it did in the 19th century. So I, uh, I think we have a complicated 
problems. Uh, it's a I know, complicated but, uh, problem. And plus, you have yeah. people like uh, get the billionaire factions, the Bloomberg, all those guys that are they're behind Biden now. Uh, they don't have much faith in democracy either anymore. And you said, Joe, in one of your articles, I believe, you know, to get out of this crisis and to truly save us, you need all you need more socialism. You don't need more capitalism. That's not going to do the trick, you know. And so even if Biden wins and the Democrats take the Senate, the struggle continues. You know, things aren't going to be necessarily totally a whole lot better, but we're going to have better ground to fight on. And so, you know, that's what we have to look forward Absolutely. to. Absolutely. And that's the point. We need better ground to fight on. People have to be active and engaged. No honeymoon, keep the pressure on. Yeah, Mass absolutely. mobilizations of the people are gonna to have to happen, whether Trump wins or whether uh, the Democrats win, the people are gonna to have to be engaged. If there's a Democratic uh, administration, we'll at least be in a position uh, to uh, be a more proactive force rather than a defensive one. I think we're going to have to leave it at that. John, thank you so much for joining oh, us. Oh, thank you for inviting morning. me. You're looking and, good, uh, Joe. we'll have you back. <laughs> and, uh, you know, everybody come out to the National Town Hall meeting on the 16th. Go to peoplesworld.org. Uh, go to CPUSA, Facebook. Uh, click on the link. We want 1,000 people to participate. 1,000. That's like we got 640 today. So 700 wow. by midnight tonight, and uh, we'll see you uh, next week, same time, same station. Take right, care. Buddy. Thanks, bye -bye. guys, very much. Bye-bye. Yep.